Hey, welcome to the Roll Steady. This is the Urban Pump Series, and today we're talking about the intake side of our pumps, and specifically that intake manifold. Let's roll up. So as we continue to move through this series, you know, I want to make sure that we've got a good solid understanding of how the intake side of our pumps is laid out. Okay, when water's coming in, how, how, how does water come in and how does it move through the piping systems that are, that are part of our apparatus before they hit the pump? Okay, uh, specifically we're gonna key in on this, this idea of the intake manifold. So, you know, this overly simplified diagram here, we've got our engine with our pump, okay? We've got two sides, we've got the intake side, we've got the discharge side. We're not talking about the discharge side of our, of our pumps today, we're focused on the intake side. Again, this is gonna be overly simplified, but this is just to help us get our minds around this idea of what the intake side of our pumps look like, specifically this intake manifold. So, like I said, we've got you know a number of, of, of intakes that are coming in on our, on our apparatus. You know, the engines that we have here in the city of Dallas, they've got five different intakes. You've got two five inch keystones. One's gonna be on the driver's side, one's gonna be on the officer's side. We've also got two two and a half inch pony suctions. Again, one on the driver's side, one on the officer's side, and then you've also got your tank to pump. Now I'm gonna put an asterisk there because it's important to understand or remember that the tank to pump is gonna, is gonna function a little bit differently in this illustration because we've got a clapper valve, there should be a clapper valve that prevents water from flowing back into the tank. So water moves one way from the tank to the pump and then water is gonna be prevented from going the opposite direction which you'll understand here when we start talking about how we move water through these pipes. So again, we said we've got these, these different intakes on our, on our apparatus, right? So we've got one of our five inch, we've got another five inch, we've got our two and a half inch, two and a half inch, and then we've got our tank to pump, okay? And what's important to understand is, is, as we start to talk about this, is this collection point right here where all these intakes converge, that's our intake manifold. So all of these intakes come together, they converge into one pipe system, and then they enter our pump, okay? That collection point, that, that, that common space that they all occupy before they hit our pump, that's your intake manifold. And so it's important to understand this because you know, let's say we were to bring in a five inch supply line and we were to hook up to this five inch intake. As we opened up that valve, water is gonna flow in, it's gonna fill this manifold and it's gonna hit water, or it's gonna send water to the pump. Okay, any water that's not being utilized by our pump right here is gonna fill this manifold and water's gonna flow back down these pipes. And the only thing that's gonna be stopping that from flowing back out are gonna be those valves in the closed position. So let's say we have our two and a half inch right here and we were to open that up. Okay, what's gonna happen? Water's gonna come flowing back out of there at the same pressure that it came in at. So let's say we were connected to a 90 pound yellow top here in the city of Dallas. Water is going to come back out at roughly 90 pounds. Now, why do I say roughly? Because there is going to be some friction loss in this system, right? But water is going to come in. Water is going to be utilized by the pump. It's going to, you know, the pump is going to add velocity, and we're going to discharge water, you know, at greater velocity on the discharge side of the pump. But any water that's not being utilized by that pump is going to fill this manifold and these pipes. And all we have to do is open up one of those to get water coming back at the same pressure. Notice, it's not the discharge pressure, it's the same pressure that it came in at. Now again, remember that, that, that tank to pump is gonna function a little bit different. If you were to open up the valve for your tank to pump, water should not flow back into your tank just because you're connected to you know, a yellow top, a 90 pound yellow top, and you've opened that up, okay? Um, that's what the tank refill is gonna be for. This should have a one-way clapper valve that only allows water to flow one direction. So that's kind of the exception of the rule. Part of this month's episode is we're giving away an amazing axe from Iron Fox Tool Co. Um, you know, you can check out the description on how you can enter, but the keyword that you're looking for is gonna be ownership. So again, hopefully this helps you guys better understand the intake side, the anatomy of the intake side of our pumps, right? You've got all of these intakes and they converge into the intake manifold pre-pump, before the pump. And that's how we can move water through just the intake side of our pump when we start talking about dual pumping and stuff like that. Okay, um, you know, a great evolution that you can run is pull the apparatus out onto the approach. You know, put it in pump gear, pull your tank to pump. So we've got water coming in on that intake side. Okay, so water's coming in at head pressure. Okay, it's gonna enter our pumps. Any of the water that's not being utilized from our, from our tank, 
by that pump is gonna fill that intake manifold. And then what I encourage you to do is open up one of your, 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 you know, your smaller keystones, or your, I'm sorry, your smaller uh, pony sections. Open that up and open that thing up and see the pressure that it comes out at. That's head pressure. Now, what you can do to kind of differentiate, and you can see the difference between the intake side and the discharge side is then open up one of your discharges, right? And pull that and see the force of the velocity of water that's coming out of that discharge compared to that intake. Should have a lot more on that discharge side because that pump is generating velocity or inducing velocity onto that uh, discharge side of the pump, whereas the intake is just being fed by that, that head pressure coming from the tank. So whether it's the tank or you know a hydrant itself, that's what you're roughly gonna get versus the discharge side. So again, thanks a lot guys for supporting this channel. Hopefully this is helping you guys out. Continue to hold fast, continue to raise the bar.